Hello researchers, the, so this is uh, another video on uh, tips to rule out some common challenges during the PhD journey. So this is another important uh, points or important topic to be discussed. See PhD journey is not an easy journey, so we, all of you know that and there are a lot of problems, lot of challenges we face during the PhD journey. Those who has already completed this journey, they know the things better. So that is why uh, the persons or the people who are doing their PhD journey now or who are in this journey. So, uh, for them, uh, there are few tips that they can adopt to rule out uh, there are few common challenges or very well known challenges in their PhD journey. So, with that aim only, this, PA, uh, this video is prepared. So, let us go ahead and see how this problem can be ruled out. So, here in this video, a uh, few important uh, or rather you can say common challenges are been listed. And uh, okay, so let us see the first one see conflict with your supervisor. Yes, this uh, may not be looking a very comfortable uh, one, but it is true that this is the prob this is the problem faced by many of the PhD students because they they and their uh, supervisors are not having that uh, proper alignment or uh, not having that proper tuning. So in that case, there can be a lot of problem. So that's it. That is why you see this is one of the most important connection during anyone's PhD. So, definitely any PhD student, they should look for the healthy environment or healthy relationship with his or her supervisor. And of course, not only healthy, it should be professional and respectful. And definitely in most of the cases, the students, uh, they what I, I have seen, they used to give their 100 percent to maintain their relationship. But many times, the from the supervisor ends, that they may not be handling the relationship with a professional way. So that is equally true for the supervisor point of view also because they also should treat the relationship as the professional relationship. They should not dig out in their personal life. Uh, means I mean the super, uh, students personal life. So let them enjoy their personal life and let them separate the personal life and the professional life in the research works etc. Okay. And uh, so this way you can rule out many challenges and look for the concrete feedback see uh, frequent interaction with your supervisor is very important so go for frequent interaction whenever your supervisor is free and try to get the solid feedback on your specific problem see when you go to the supervisor go with a specific problem and try to solve your problem and then you go ahead but if you do not go with go to supervisor with a specific problem then de definitely the interaction may not be fruitful so that point you keep in mind next point is see handling the stress of paper rejection this is a very common point or very very common challenge that everyone faces see during uh, uh, all of you know that during your PhD journey at least you have to publish few papers maybe three to four minimum now see uh, when you submit a paper rejection is a common phenomenon so you need not to get disheartened on that you need not to get uh, you need not to take it so seriously so rejection is a common thing and not only you, almost all the people who has completed their PhD or going through this journey, everyone faced this problem. Okay, So it is not a new thing for you. So if this is the case, then what you have to do, you sit with your supervisor, suppose your paper is rejected, so you sit with your supervisor and you carefully analyze the reviewer comments, carefully check what uh, reviewer has given the comments and how you can improve it, you work on that. And after improving, immediately you submit it to another journal. So don't sit ideally or don't you think that, no, I will make the paper perfect, then only I will submit. No, this is not going to work. You improve it as far as knowledge is concerned or in consultation with your supervisor, then you submit to another journal. But keep on submitting because if you keep on submitting, then if it gets rejected also, it will come with some comments. So that will give you some more insights how you can improve the paper. But instead of Submitting, if you just see it on the paper, then ultimately it will kill your time and it is not going to help you anyway. So this point, see, don't take the paper rejection seriously. It is a common phenomena for every PhD student. So update it and resubmit it. So that is the solution of this. Next one, difficulty in finding the perfect research gap. Yes, this is another point. Many people suffer from this, that they are not finding a specific or very clear research gap. And it is true. And see, uh, in many uh, universities or uh, 
institutes uh, our lab facility if it is experimental work i'm saying lab facilities may not be very good then you may have many ideas in your have brain but you do not have the resources to carry out that kind of work so that also you have to keep in mind so first you see what are the resources available with you or what you may manage in the coming few months or few year uh, one or, or few months maybe six months or one year because you cannot take more time for your laboratory setup and etc because you have to complete this the whole journey maybe four to five hours five years so that point also you have to keep in mind now if you want to uh, specify the research grab that definitely you should take help from your supervisor so seek input from your supervisor to scope your topic then you need to go through the recent review articles because see if you go through the review articles that will give you a very good overview of the total area and that will help you to narrow down your topic so this is very important if you uh, want to find a proper research gap so find the review articles and you go through that articles and whatever the research gap you have det uh, determined start with that don't sit and uh, think that you will get a even very concrete research gap then you will start no whatever you got you start from there and definitely as the time will pass you will see that you are coming up with new new research gap so that is the uh, normal uh, phenomena for everyone so don't sit idle you just go ahead with the idea or the gap whatever you have determined now another point i would like to add here that uh, you should not uh, choose a topic or i rather uh, that my suggestion is that it is better not to choose a topic which is very very new or you do not have sufficient data on that so then also it is going to be a problem of course if you are in a one of the very best laboratory where you have all the support supports and everything then it is separate issue but in majority of the cases this may not be the condition so in that case you better not to start a topic which is very very fresh you may not have sufficient data on that and on the other hand you should not work on a very uh, what to say means uh, absolute topic because if you choose the absolute topic then definitely your paper is not going to publish so choose the moderate path okay so better not to go with the very fresh area or not to go with the very old area or absolute area so try to find area which is in moderately moderate area where you can find some kind of research gap that is i feel that is one of the good option but of course if your supervisor is having uh, some uh, very good knowledge in some very new area and your laboratory or other analytical facilities it is having state of the art conditions then you may choose to that is separate thing but in generally it is not preferable so number 4 it is also linked with that uh, previous point that insufficient research data so that is why you can do good research when you have access to rich data but you may struggle to find this kind of correct data so that just now what i told so make sure that when you pick up your phd project or the topic you have a solid plan and resources resources to get the required data and you don't want to change your topic after a year due to the lack of data definitely this is going to be a blunder because initially you need to have a proper plan it may take few months maybe 6 months 8 months is okay you choose a perfect plan then you go ahead but instead of uh, going for a specific or perfect plan if you just randomly start with anything without any background study then you may end up with some serious problem after one year or one half year so that is why you just see what is the condition of your research area and tr try to figure out the research gap beforehand before starting the research work so as i already told it should not be very very fresh area or it should not be very absolute area so try to go with the area which is moderately developed so that is i feel one of the best option now come to the next point lack of motivation yes this is yes this is another very big problem because as it is a long journey 4 to 5 years of journey and then see there will be hardly very few stages where you you can actually celebrate the success maybe uh, paper acceptance so it will be maybe 4 to 5 maximum in your 4 to 5 years then your thesis clearance synopsis clearance something like that so that uh, that if you total it then also it may not be more than 8 to 10 times in your whole phd journey so that is why lack of motivation is a common thing uh in phd journey but see you will lose the motivation due to the reason such as not getting the expected results so that is an one point my 
whatever you have planned you are not getting the result as per your plan or as per your uh, uh, expectation then paper rejection yes this is sufficient enough to demotivate you then criticism yes this is also because criticism from many ends especially if it is from supervisor then it is very damaging and several other factors we know that so there are several factors which help in the lack of motivation for the phd scholar and it is not the thing that you are only facing this problem everybody comes across this problem so that is why you need to be very strong because this is the time when your true strength will be tested because see if you have completed the phd it is not like that you have only published few papers and you have cleared your thesis in addition to that your strength mental strength and uh, so uh, the capability to uh, take the challenge that also tested in your phd journey so stay strong and stay focused and better to keep yourself away from the negative minded people because negative minded people not only they are negative they will make you negative so it is better to go out or keep a distance from the negative minded people and keep contact with your well wishers and share your problems thought with them so sharing is caring help so try to share your problem with your friends who are really good for you and then this way you can take up the motivation to go ahead another work is not completing the work within the allotted time or the stipulated time so we have uh, it is known to that the phd journey it is normally 4 to 5 years uh, if you go for the full time scholar then sometimes it you, you may struggle to finish on time so to avoid it you need to follow proper time management or the work plan so proper time management and work plan is very very important for example like uh, first 6 months maybe your course work will be going on then uh, next 6 months you will do the literature review or something then maybe after one year means from uh, your third semester onwards you should start your work okay and then try to publish as soon as possible so what the plan is maybe when you are in the um, uh, fourth semester or uh, you have end up the third semester uh, third semester means one and half year at that time you should have one paper one published paper with you so this way you will get motivation also and your pressure will come down your stress will come down okay so that is why publish as soon as possible and keep at least 4 to 6 months time for your thesis writing this is very important see if you are planning that i will publish 4 to 5 papers then you try to publish each paper in every 6 months so in that case what will happen after 4 years maybe already 5 papers you have published and then another 1 year you have for thesis writing so that there will be lot um, you can reduce lot of stress this way otherwise suppose if 2 years gone or 2 and half years gone you have not published a single paper then definitely the stress will be very very high so to avoid this kind of uh, situation you start working hard from the day one so that at least in the first year or if not possible in the second year you publish at least one paper in your from your research work so this way you can reduce the stress next point is the slow progress yes when you start your phd then uh, you need to learn lot of new new uh, techniques or skills like how to read paper how to write manuscript reading paper is okay but writing manuscript is the main problem what i feel the students are facing data analysis etc etc and another problem is that uh, setting up the laboratory if you are doing experimental work but see you need not to worry uh, if you are slow but thing is that you should move a little you should go ahead or there if there are progress slow progress then also it is need not to worry but you should not be stopped at some point you should move if it is slow also is fine but you should move okay so give you 100% and try to accelerate the progress but no need to be upset that if your progress is slow then it is coming the work life work life balance so i feel this is this is one of the most important one see many phd students struggle to maintain a balance between the work and the personal life balance the work and personal life is very important because see doing excellent phd it is everyone's uh, target every phd scholar target however don't kill yourself be kind to yourself see phd is not your life yes phd is important but this is not your life so you need to remember this if you complete the phd it will help you to get a better job or some other uh, income source but it is not your life so you have to keep a balance between the uh, your research work and your personal life okay so be kind to yourself that is the point you need to keep in mind 
so establishing a good balance is very very important so yes give lot of time for your research but don't forget to enjoy your good time with your family and friends this is very very important celebrate every small success small success means in your research area what whenever there is a small success you celebrate it so this will give you more motivation like one paper has has been accepted so you enjoy it you celebrate it with your lab mate your batch mates or with your supervisor go for a small party so this will give you more energy and motivation so that you can work with more enthusiasm next is it take small breaks in between and go for vacation for rejuvenation yes yeah, this is very important because at a stress if you keep on working definitely you will get fatigue so you take small breaks maybe one week of breaks or 3 to 4 days of break and go for a small vacation with your lab mates or friends or maybe family so this will fresh up your mind and when you will come back and you will start the work again you will you will feel that you are very energetic and you are starting with a new energy so this is very very important and here the role of supervisor is also very important they should also be very flexible with their students they should not be very rigid no you should not go for vacation etc they should also feel that this phd scholars they are also human beings so they also have their family their uh, friends so they also need their some personal time so please lead, let them allow to go for some personal work and no need to dig their personal life as a supervisor your uh, role is to look after their research work so let them enjoy their personal life don't interfere in their personal life that is my opinion so this way actually both way it should work I means from supervisor point of view also it should work then managing research stress stress so this is we know that uh, during the phd journey everyone will be stressful i will uh, means you will find very less people or very less percentage of the people who to who will uh, tell that no during my phd journey i have not faced any stress it is almost impossible okay so situation can be stressful in your phd journey so there is nothing uh, special on that yeah situation can be stressful but it can be reduced with cold shower yes cold shower is very technique very good technique to reduce your stress then get in touch with the nature like long walk in nature or having some feedback from the lab mates when you are stressful share your problem with your lab mates then meditation We all of you know that mindfulness meditation and regular exercise this can be game changer for your stress management during your phd journey so although you may be very much um, involved with your phd journey but don't forget that if you are physically and mentally fit then only you can give you 100% so that is why to make you physically fit you uh, go for regular exercise maybe daily 40 45 minutes fine and of course meditation meditation that will keep you mentally very cool relax so that you can provide you 100% and nowadays there are uh, so many platforms are there where you can practice the mindfulness meditation so that these two things i believe uh, is going to help you a lot to manage your stress during the phd journey and the another point is homesickness yeah this may not be a serious one for many of us but some people uh, suffer from this problem also because during the phd journey it is very likely that you will move to another country or city for your phd program so in such a case you will feel homesick and it is quite common for many of us especially at the initial stage of your phd journey okay so in that case uh, what you can do before uh, go, uh, going to that uh, new area try to connect the people who are already there okay maybe uh, some seniors who are working in that area or in that lab classmates lab mates etc so this way what you can do you can uh, your mind will help you to settle in that new place and you will feel comfortable so that you can work nicely so these are the uh, few tips so what i thought that i will share with uh, the phd students so that may be helpful for them so anyway uh, thank you uh, for this for your time and watching this uh, video so here are this uh, references that i have followed uh, for preparation of this video so thank you once again for